We welcome you, and if you've been watching at home, we had a, a very productive business meeting. Uh, that's why our late start here for prayer meeting, but we're going to take some time to pray for those that the Lord has put on our heart here in just a moment. But let's go to the Lord in prayer together as we start our prayer meeting together. Father God, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you've called us together to not only do the business of your church, but Father, we thank you that part of the business of your church is to pray and to study. So Lord God, in these next few moments, Lord, would you help us to uh, participate in those two things to the fullest of the, of the opportunity you give us. And Lord, let us glorify you and grow in you because of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so tonight with the, with the long business meeting, but with also a lot of updates, I, I want to do something different. I'm going to call an audible here, if that's okay with y'all. Um, if it's not, then we'll have prayer meeting continued part two at 745, and you can stick around. We'll talk, we'll talk as long as you want. All right, uh, but here's what I'd like to do. Uh, I would like to take, we've got, um, we've got basically, we're going to divide it up into three sections. We've got three sections of our tables right here. Um, we will not necessarily have time to voice a bunch of prayer requests out loud, uh, but you certainly are going to be having enough time to pray for prayer requests. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do is, first off, if you have someone that needs to be added or an update that needs to be noted, if you will, please grab one of these green sheets over here and write it down for us. Be specific, especially if you're adding someone. Make sure to tell us where to add them on the prayer list. Are they at home? Are they in the hospital? Where, where are they? Where do they fit in the organization of the list? All right, so make sure you do that if you'd like to have an addition. We appreciate when you do because it makes it so much easier for us to keep track of, and, uh, and, and that, that's been a good process for us when we take advantage of it. So here's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to let you, uh, obviously you can pray for anybody you want to pray for, but to give you a prompt, to give you a place to look on the list, uh, as to if, you're not, if you already don't have people on your heart to pray for, what we're going to do is down this, my left-hand side right here, so all the way from Erica way back there to, to Jana and Alan, I think you're trying to qualify either one, middle or side, whichever one you want to do, or whichever one Jana will let you. Um, so you guys on this side, we're going to give you kind of the smaller categories, right? They're not smaller in importance, just smaller in number of names. Hospital, hospice, sympathy, rest homes, and then um, the three at the bottom, members of armed forces, expect, expectant mothers and new babies, and also prayer and missions. If you guys will just around your tables, when we say go in just a moment, if you'll pray for any and all of those folks on those parts of the list, we'll appreciate that. Right down here, down the middle, this middle section, we'd ask you to pray for the folks at home. We've got a lot of updates and additions there. Uh, some you know about, but God knows about all of them. So as you mentioned them in prayer, if you don't know about everything that's going on, that's okay. Continue to pray the Lord's will. And then down my right-hand side over there, coming starting with Miss Sandy, going all the way back to Miss Noreen and Troy, if y'all will gather up and pray for the cancer patients part of the list. Again, you can pray for as many extra people as you'd like. We're not telling you not to pray for anybody, but we want to cover as much as we can of our prayer list in this short time that we have together tonight. And we want to do it in prayer, not just talking about praying for them, all right? So we're going to go into a time of prayer. If you'd like to move around, and get with other tables if you just like to pray for your part of the people uh, at your table that's fine you do it as the spirit leads if you're watching at home you are welcome to pray for anyone the lord puts on your heart let's go to the lord in prayer as we pray together now
Lord God, we thank you for the many prayers that have gone up and are continuing to go up even as we pray now. Father God, help us to be people who are eager to, to pray, Father, as you've called us and as you lead us to do. Father, help us to, uh, to, to lift up uh, not just prayers that affect us, but, Father, the prayers that affect all of the people that you would have us to love and to serve. Father God, would you help us, Lord, to, uh, to grow, Father, in, in not only enthusiasm about that, but, Father, in the diligence and the dedication uh, of spending time in prayer for all the many things that we, that we, that we worry about, the people that, we, that are suffering, Father, the, the, the situations that are hurtful. And Father, also to remember to praise you for the great things, the many blessings you've given us. Father God, certainly to pray for the things that we, uh, we want to seek your direction in. Father, for our own lives, for the lives of our church, Father, for the life of our community, for our nation, Father, whomever you might mention. Lord God, we thank you that in these short moments tonight, Father God, much work was done in prayer. And we thank you that when you are working, Father, through the prayers of your people, you're not only working in the situations and the people we pray for, but you're working in us as well. So, Lord God, would you continue to do that, Father, and encourage us, Lord, as we continue to grow in our prayer life with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, in our last few moments, uh, I want to just, uh, the, the last, no, this week and next week, the plan is to, is to just take a look at that familiar passage from Matthew chapter 5 that we know of as the Beatitudes. Uh, what Jesus is doing as he, as he opens up uh, what we know of as the Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon ever preached, certainly better than any one I'd ever preached, uh, the one that came straight from Jesus' lips and not only, it, not only, taught many people but blew a lot of people away because he said some things that they were not expecting and said some things in some ways that they'd never heard. Uh, it brought about much thought, it brought about much opposition, but it also brought about much conviction, growth, and, and support for the kingdom of God. Uh, and so in Matthew chapter 5 verse 1, it starts out this way. It says, now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Now we just hit the first five of them or so this evening, uh, and we'll get to the rest of them, Lord willing, next Wednesday night. Uh, but Jesus is, is setting about a, a, a mindset. He's setting about a worldview. He's setting about a way of looking at things. And the, and the things that he describes in the beginning of each of the Beatitudes, which are our couplets of comparisons, are opposite thoughts, uh, but saying that if you're this way, then this will happen. Uh, and he's, he takes some things that may not seem favorable, but then tells us that in the kingdom of God, they will bring favorable results or favorable future will, will meet those that are in that seemingly unfavorable situations. Um, and so as he teaches them, just literally sitting on his, his own, by his own hand created amphitheater, natural amphitheater of a mountain to be able to, st to stand or to sit right there on that mountainside uh, and, and be in front of all of these people to where they could hear him. In, in a miracle of itself, the first thing he says is, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Being poor in spirit doesn't sound like something that we would strive for very often. Um, most of the time, we want to be rich in spirit. We want to be proud in spirit. We want to be strong in spirit. So why would he start off this perspective, this worldview, saying it this way? He simply says this. Uh, he's telling us that this is not always going to go the way we think it goes. That the things that we think are the goal are not always the goal. In fact, a lot of times the things we think are the goal are not. And that we should be okay to be poor in spirit because it's when we're thinking about what the world is and who we are that, that, that it's not always very uplifting, is it? But to be poor in spirit at this point, to not be haughty, to not be arrogant. He says those, those people who are poor in spirit, well, those, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That here we might think ourselves lowly and compared to God we are. 
But the inheritance that comes through his kingdom is far greater than anything we could achieve here. Secondly, he says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. None of us look forward to mourning. But to know that when we hurt, God is not only the answer, but he is faithful to come and heal our hurt over time and according to his will and his spirit. It's okay when we mourn because we know that he will comfort us. Thirdly, he says, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Boy, American culture, Western culture, meek's not really always looked on real favorably, is it? To be quiet, gentle, kind. Those things don't always get you far in this world the way it's set up right now. But he says, blessed are the meek because they will inherit the earth. In other words, they'll still be around when uh, the others have been pushed off in all their accomplishments, but not faith in the Lord. They've been pushed off into judgment and into condemnation. The new heaven, the new earth will be inherited by the ones who were humble, the ones who were like Jesus. And on, in the fourth one, he says this, he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. So many people hunger and thirst for a lot of things. Righteousness sometimes is not one of them. A lot of times is not one of them. We hunger and thirst for power and acceptance and accomplishment and fame and all these other things, wealth and all that. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who realize our lack of righteousness and are hungry to have what only God can give. He says, they will be filled. And then finally tonight, in the fifth, uh, fifth of the Beatitudes, he says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Sometimes to get a leg up, to, uh, to, to get over on someone else, we have to uh, be ruthless, we think. But that's not the way of Christ. He says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. I know that's a very quick treatment, and certainly the Beatitudes, uh, like so many other passages of Scripture, like all other passages of Scripture, uh, they, they are deserving of much more time. But tonight, I would encourage you uh, to, not just in the Beatitudes from Matthew, cha Matthew chapter 5, but in all of Scripture, to understand that the way that we understand things in this world are not always the way that God has them to be and are not always the way they truly, really are. Jesus starts out the greatest sermon ever preached. He starts it out by flipping our ways of thinking on, its, on their ears, right? By turning things upside down, by saying, you don't think this is good, but this is what comes from it. And let that perspective, let that understanding that that's what Jesus does, let that change the way we think about and the things we chase after in our lives. Let's wrap up by going to the Lord of Prayer and in, in prayer together. Yes, sir. I know everybody in prayer, but I just want to pass along reading the mobile that's been dealing with the kidney issues for years. And actually, I've been praying for the Lord to help him to get through it. And then I've been praying for the Lord to help him to get through it. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, fantastic. We'll keep praying that that goes through and that everything is just right. Well, that's, uh, that's excellent news. Okay. All right, let's wrap up with a word of prayer together. Father God, we thank you for great news, just like Alan shared about his friend, Lord. We thank you that, you know, that prayer is not something that, that we have control over you in, Father, but you do answer prayer according to your will. And Lord, we ask you to do that in our lives. Let our will be your will. Father, let, let our understanding be the truth that comes from you. Father, let us understand things the way you call us to, not just in the way we think are so worldly smart. Father God, help us, Lord, to go from this place being the things, uh, being the type of people that you say are blessed. And Father, let us look forward to the reward that comes from faith in Christ and helping or in allowing you to make us that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.